Witness me, Smegma Crazies, and welcome back to Mad Max. Aha! Uh -huh. The killer of Scrotus Pups comes. In that crack yonder, you can go in and kill with ease. Sucklings in there are weak. Especially if you shut their war crier up. Listen, you want to do it? Look to the wrecks to the right of the entrance. An easier way in. Hidden. This is not one of those camps that doesn't really have a whole lot going for it as far as perimeter oh, yeah. defense, but it's it does give you the additional option of another way around just in case you're interested. You know, because sometimes you don't have to, don't want to have to deal with a gate or a sniper. You may notice that uh, little little X on that. Uh, hello. Anyway, as I was saying, there is a small X on one of these uh, storage containers. And that X will be our way in. Well, it'll be a way in. not a very exciting alternate route, but it exists, so might as well go for it, right? The game gets a little bit chunky on me here. Don't really know why, but no big deal. Sometimes Max gets a little wound up during his fear animations and he'll just swing for the fences in the wrong direction. At least a little bit of that can be chalked up to player input, but sometimes he's just a he's just a force of nature. He's just gonna do his own thing. That little cut there was uh get a phone call. You know, you can't really ignore those. Well, you can, but eh. It happens a few times.
You know, one thing I do at least appreciate about the explosions in this game is how they just turn the uh, people affected by the explosions into chunky soup. That guy just disappeared. Yeah, there's no such thing as a partial explosion in this game. You're either inside the explosion, or you're totally fine. And if you are inside the explosion, oh, praise be, you're gonna be, you're gonna be in for a world of hurt. I like how the war crier has that little uh, pool of fire below his little hoist. You can see where he's been, uh, you know, firing at his flames and banging his drum. It's just a neat little touch. Everything sparks. Or explodes. Like, that wasn't even a very long fall and that dude still explodes. As we continue to level up Max and get better equipment, um, not to mention better skills, especially as we get better knuckle dusters, these uh, war pups are going to take less and less damage. Well, let me rephrase that. They'll take more and more damage and take less time to kill. It's, uh, I'm always happy to see them, you know, go down in less hits because that just means more time for other carnage. Plus, out of everything you get from, uh, or for leveling up your Fury Meter, I'm pretty sure kills is the, uh, is the largest, uh, contributor. Getting a bunch of kills inside Fury Mode can keep your Fury going for quite a bit. And with this, uh, most recent skill I just unlocked, the Fury Ground Execution, that can keep going for a while. There's no reason to break this, but I'm going to do it anyway, because... EXPLOSIONS! Oh. Well, that... Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I guess that raises an interesting philosophical question, you know? If, uh, if a barrel explodes in the wilderness and no one's around to hear it, does it still make a loud boom? Or does, it, uh, does a watched barrel never explode? I'm not real sure what a good way to take advantage of that uh, giant explosion is. You know, obviously it seems like it's designed to take care of these war boys down here, but I don't think there's a way for you to reach it. Um, you might be able to hit it with a shotgun from down below, but I kind of doubt it. I don't know. 
it seems like that entire thing is just designed to be able to say, oh, hey, you can totally hit these guys and kill them all with a big boom, because who doesn't love big booms? But I don't see a practical way to make that happen. The eagle eyed among you may be noticing that I'm usually entering the car from the uh, left side, by the way. There's a reason for that, even though that the car drives on the right side. And ideally, sometimes through the LP, that reason will become apparent. But it hasn't happened yet. In fact, I've already recorded up to the point where we're actually going to go see Gut Gash, and it still hasn't happened by then either. But I have faith. Praise be. is I do have a reason for going through and, you know, doing as much of the wasteland stuff I am doing already. Uh, taking out a lot of the threat in Jeet's region will allow us to upgrade the harpoon. And an upgraded harpoon is, well, it's really viable for getting a lot of stuff in the other areas. Um, a lot of things are tied to, what you call it, uh, maybe strong or even fortified gates. And the ability to pull those down with a harpoon is kind of huge. That's not what I wanted to do. But yeah, the ability to pull down fortified yates or fortified scarecrows or even fortified sniper towers is fairly valuable. So at least part of the reason that I'm going through and doing all this scavenging is to get the scrap for it. But the reason I'm going through and doing all these camps is so I can actually access it. Obviously, uh, Gut Gash and Pink Eye and Deep Frya, the other, uh, the other folks we'll find in the area that will give us access to upgrades, we'll have different things. I mean, right now our goal is to get to Gut Gash so that we can even uh, get better armor. But, you know, I'll get there. The only place I could see myself maybe going a little bit further ahead is uh, once we get into Pink Eyes territory and have access to Gas Town, uh, Chum Bucket does have better... Watch gallets. Um, repair tools that will increase his repair speed. And those are in the gas tent area. And those are good to find early on. But that's still, that's still a little ways off. convoys a few times and largely I've been avoiding them. Some of the ones I would almost think we can possibly take on now, but without having armor it's a bit dicey. Not to mention as we continue to move further west towards Gut Gash's territory, most of the other vehicles in the convoy will also get armor and um, well, armor's a problem. <laughs> reduces the damage that you can effectively do to the um, to the vehicles in the convoy but eh, there's a way to deal with armor that will that we'll run into later for now it's just a problem be so important. Allies are a powerful aid. Even a dog can be a lifesaver. You focus your loyalty on a dead thing. I can drive a car. 
I'll cross the plains of silence in a car. People, get in my way. Do you trust a car? More than any man. We have a long way to walk. Let's look deeper. I believe I've mentioned before that whenever you're using your um, Griffa tokens, anytime you anytime you visit Griffa, you do have to use all of them. So because I had one extra there at the end, I actually had to put a point into the increase your uh, prestige rank, which normally I would you know not bother with, but eh, that's the way it is. Just go! I need to polish some hard to get parts in the engine bay. <laughs> Chum, I get the feeling you're oh, a deviant. About this place makes my hair stand up. I don't think we've run into ferals yet, but there's something interesting in this scavenging location. Ferals are essentially humans that have gone a little bit too wild. And this is a human who's gone a little bit too wild and also strapped a suicide vest to himself. Yeah. Ferals are a little bit like the, um, like the, uh, what you call them, the psychopaths or the, the little guys in the sanitarium from Arkham Asylum. You know, they rush at you, they have to be countered, and they have to, uh, you have to put them down on the ground. They're real slippery little jerks. But yeah, they have a lot in common with those guys from Arkham Asylum. Um, in this game, they're basically the same, but sometimes they have on the suicide vests. Because I guess when all you are is essentially a human dog, you know, you're just going to rush at somebody and try and tear them apart. And, you know, maybe that involves a, a bomb vest. And, you know, it's very complicated. So finally I found the scrap crew, and that means that now I'm safe to turn off this game for a little bit for a change. Well, I say safe, but as I've mentioned, the scrap crew gets you passive income when the game is turned off. You know, maybe to kind of keep you up or give you an excuse to turn it off once in a while. Um, so I want to say that it maxes out at 400. I don't know how many days that takes. But it maxes out at 400. And every stronghold you go to can have a scrap crew. So, give enough time off just by, you know, turning the game back on, you can get 1,600 scrap. Which is not a small amount. That's, that's enough to get a whole lot of upgrades at this point. Still, the magnum opus has you been getting a little thirsty because we don't really have an easy way of refilling our cars of yet. Of course, a lot of the gas cans we find also aren't going to have much gas in them, but, you know, it, it is what it is. It's fine. But that's going to just about do it for this exciting episode of Mad Max. We dismantled a camp and beat up a lot, beat up a bunch of people, avoid a suicide bomber, 
it's good. And of course, can't forget, shot a sniper in and around the facial or chest area. So I'll go ahead and sign off for now, but please join me next time when we continue to dismantle the Scrotus Legion. Until then, stay thirsty.